OK. Let's switch gears and talk about other things that can affect, because we talked about phytonutrients and how they affect the brain. What else nutritionally affects the way your brain works? We're going to get into a little gaps. Tell me if any of these names sound familiar. Acid reflux disease, appendicitis, autoimmune disease, Barrett's esophagus, celiac disease, celiac sprud, colitis, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, diverticulotus, dyspepsia, duodenitis, enteritis, erosive esophagitis. I'm actually skipping a few because it's a long list. GERD, gastritis, gluten enteropathy, gluten sensitivity, gluten intolerance, gluten uh, H. pylori, ileitis, indigestion, intestinal metaplasia, irritable bowel syndrome, <laughs> irritable bowel disease, jejunitis, lactose intolerance, microscopic colitis, non-tropical sprue, peptic ulcer disease, reflux esophagitis, spastic colon, ulcers. I'm going through this list of names. These are pretty much conditions, names given to conditions that are really all the same. They've come up with so many names to differentiate one gut problem from the other. For the most part, they're all guts that aren't working right. Inflammatory bowel disease, inflammatory you know, syndrome, whatever you want to call it. Do you know any people with any of these names of conditions? Or you've heard them? You've heard some of them before? It's funny because people like to have a diagnosis and say, that's me. Now, you know, that means uh, I have gluten intolerance. I have celiac disease. Oh, all I have to do to get better is not eat gluten and not drink milk and everything's fine. Well, you'd like to think so, but really you have an inflammatory gut condition. Those are the things that are inflaming, inflaming it. Wouldn't you actually like to heal it and get better? Not so that you can eat those things because you know, uh, there's probably better things to eat, but wouldn't you actually like your gut to work better? Are you sure you don't have any other symptoms that you just have this, you know, bloody bowel movement when you eat those foods, so, uh, so you're going to avoid them and that's good enough for you. Do you have any skin conditions? You know, is your mind working all clear? You have, are you focused? Because when these problems inside the gut, you know, are, are, are when, the, when they're happening, your mind's not going to be clear. Chances are you're going to see it on your skin. They're kind of like one and the same. It affects all of these things in your body. So I don't like all the names. I like to recognize that you know, people have guts that aren't working right and they need help. <laughs> and it's time to start cutting out the things that are inflaming it and putting in the foods that can heal it, doing the things that are right. Now, on this screen I have a whole list of symptoms that go along with that. Everything from, you know, burping to indigestion to gas and you can imagine. It's another long list, not worth going through the whole list. Um, when your gut is like that and you put food into your body and you have this inflammatory bowel disease or disorder or syndrome, what happens to the food? Leaky gut syndrome. It, it, it Isn't there one uh, symptom where it uh, clogs up the little um, diverticuli and diverticulosis? I guess it's called. Could be. Toxic. Yeah. Toxic. Okay. Do you know where those toxins come from? It's okay. If, you know. Rotting from rotting food. Yeah. From all, okay. So the way it works, we all have a gut flora. Where do you think that flora comes from? Bacteria, and how do you get that bacteria into your mouth? A lot of people actually believe that it's from the birth process itself, meaning the going through the birth canal is an important thing and that you're actually taking on a lot of the bacteria flora from your mother as you pass through, and that's kind of one of the ways that your gut gets populated with bacteria. So a lot of people that are actually born C-section might be actually missing out on a very vital, you know, filling of bacteria. 
population of their gut with bacteria. Now, there's all kinds of different strains of bacteria and no two people are going to be alike. But there are, ideally you would have mostly good bacteria in your gut and less pathogenic bacteria. We all have a balance. When that gets out of whack and you have more pathogenic bacteria, especially those bacteria, when they start dying off, they're going to be releasing toxins. So a lot of this gut and psychology syndrome is actually things dying off. Have you ever heard that you have to control like a kill off reaction if you have parasites or anything like that because of the to toxic reactions? People that have uh, mold in their brains and you know all kinds of parasites and pathogenic bacteria, as these things are dying off, they're putting toxins, dumping toxins into the body. Think of it like this. Think of your intestines having this nice healthy coating of bacteria on the inside and that bacteria kind of protecting the, intex, the intestines, the enterocytes, those superficial layers of your intestines, keeping them healthy. Uh, that's a layer of protection. But when you wipe out the good, healthy bacteria, it's like opening up the enterocytes, the first layer of the intestines, the, the villi, the microvilli, to an attack and an inflammatory response. As those things swell up and inflame, Foods that you eat can now leak through unprocessed, undigested. The bacteria are there to help you digest your food. When things pass through the intestines unprocessed, what is your body going to do? How is it going to react to those things? Attack it. It's going to attack it. Is it possible that gluten sensitivity is really your body just attacking something that shouldn't be in the bloodstream to begin with. Or dairy sensitivities, or, or in the case of vegetation, sensitivity to something so simple like fiber. Has anyone ever been diagnosed, don't answer if, you know, in here if it's you, but do you know what someone that's been diagnosed as, diagnosed as bipolar? That means that they have two poles in their brain, right? Okay. What do they say? They say you have a chemical imbalance. It's a chemical imbalance. What's a chemical imbalance? Nutrients in your blood are your nutrition, right? A chemical imbalance is really a nutrition imbalance. It's the chemistry of your body and something's not right. And they try to change that with drugs and medications. Um, let's see, a bipolar is uh, two poles in your head. What is schizophrenia? That must be like two people in your brain. <laughs> or is it a chemical imbalance? And if it's a chemical imbalance, is it really a nutrition imbalance? How many other mental disorders are there where they try to patch them up chemically because it's a nutritional imbalance? Is it making sense? Gut and psychology syndrome. Unhealthy gut, lack of nutrition, the brain doesn't work like it's supposed to. Toxic attack on the brain. It doesn't work like it's supposed to. You know, you, you have this, uh, has anyone ever heard of the blood-brain barrier? Do you know what the purpose of that is? It's certain things are supposed to be able to pass through it and certain things not. The chemical attack on that can actually, you know, just like the, make the gut leak, the blood-brain barrier can leak. And all of a sudden, the toxins all the more damaging to the way the brain functions. So just trying to tie, all, tie this together a little bit.